Hello, friends. Those back pages here. I hope you're well. Tonight's episode is entitled The Elephant in the Room. Before we get started, I want to remind you that the show is coming up. If you're able to go, please do so. It's very important that your voice is heard. Now, for the elephant in the room. Just grabbed a couple slabs from my collection. Thought this one was rather fitting. <clears throat> Maybe I'll grab one more. <clears throat> I don't know if I've shown this one yet. Slide over, Harold. Get over it. All right. You see three slabs in front of you. Let's talk about each of them a little bit. Eighty nine Griffey, Bowman Tiffany, graded a long time ago. Seems to be actually graded, in my opinion. There's a scratch on the case. Well centered for the issue. <clears throat> 1985 Topps Garbage Pail Kids stickers. First series, original release, cheater's license back. There's also a checklist back that they went with after a little while after parents started complaining. Their kids getting cheating licenses for school. And lastly, from last year's Prism NBA release, a super shiny well, it's not a silver, but it's it's got nice etching on it. <clears throat> Luka Doncic. Now, if you are unaware of what's been going on for pretty much now, going back six plus months now, November, our third party graders are letting us down. Almost seems like daily now there's new threads on Blowout. A message board you should be a member of if you're in the community. It is like, like Mos Eisley though, it's full of scum and villainy and however Obi-Wan said it, it's true. Blowout can be a place that's not for the faint of heart. But it is the most active place to go. <clears throat> but anyway, there are almost daily threads of guys on their own time showing pictures before, after pictures, whether a card was raw or was previously graded and is now residing in a higher grade slab from. BGS or PSA. So both companies are failing at their job. I'm sure there's SGC as well, but they're a distant third. And basically, if there's money to be made anywhere, 
the low lives will make that money. Do whatever necessary to make that money because for a lot of people, greed is what it's all about. The mighty dollar. So recently, this all started back in November with a LeBron James exquisite RPA that went from a 7, BGS 7.5, BGS 7.5 to a BGS 9 by getting a haircut, getting the sides trimmed off. Easily identifiable, there was before pictures when the card was raw and it had chipping along the edges, both left and right side. And then the current, the current slabs, and now those edges are no longer chipped. You can do the math. That was right around the time when the SGC autograph scandal broke. So there you go. You for SCG, then they actually gave up on autographing cards, on the grading autographs, in person, through the mail. That's how rocked they were by the scandal, the T206 scandal. <clears throat> Recently, there's been a lot of threads about vintage cards being restored. Certain consigners calling it conserved, which is a bunch of malarkey to myself. Cards being doctored, corners being restored, cardstock being thinned, stretched, and trimmed, and then drying to acceptable dimensions, re-slabbing in a higher graded PSA holder. Extreme cases, I think I've seen threes go to sevens due to trimming. Do these cards fall within the parameters of uh, of the uh, required measurements? Probably. Is PSA measuring all these cards? I don't know. I like to think they are, but I don't know. Apologize, you can see my hands there in the Luca. I really don't know what the answer for all this is. I think I think PSA and BGS, I suppose, are slammed with orders. Slammed with people sending in dozens and dozens of these Lucas. Dozens, hundreds, fifties, whatever it may be. To, you know, because of ten I don't follow what 10s are. That 9 was $12, which is about what a raw card goes for. <clears throat> so BGS and PSA have their hands full slabbing brand new cards. So, you know, take a $12 card and make it a 10. If it comes back a 10, it's $60 or 50 or whatever it is. So you have the bulk submitters, you know, bulking up on current current stars, flavor of the month, flavor of the monthers. So that backlogs the system. So when a vintage card comes in, maybe it's not looked over as much as it should be, regardless of what they say. Two, three people look over cards, I don't know. I would like to think that a 52 man is looked at more than a 85 top stickers, Adam Bomb. That's what I would expect, especially for the, the fees they charge. They charge us a sliding scale fee because they guarantee the grade assigned to the card. So if the card turns out to be trimmed or overgraded, they will. I guess it's to be determined how they will compensate you, but they will. That is what I am to believe. So, 
I really appreciate you guys tuning in. And if you're still with me, I really appreciate it. I've been trying to think, you know, what's the answer? Maybe this is the answer. Maybe it's time for grading to be grading for grading's sake. Well, what does that mean, Eric? That means you pay your grading fee, you send your cards to PSA, they grade them for you, and they send them back to you when they are finished. That doesn't mean you pay extra to get them back in a week. You might get back, you maybe get them back in six months, eight months, twelve months. But they don't send them back until the job is done properly. The cars are inspected for doctoring, for conservation, whatever it may be. Maybe a little chop down on the back load. Maybe people won't send in 50 Lucas to get slabbed. Makes me very sad to see what's going on the last six months. I still have faith in grading. But it's hard not to second guess. A friend of mine just tonight sent me a link of a completed PSA 9 auction of a very prevalent Hall of Fame rookie card that ended for over four figures. He said, wow, that's a great looking copy, and I agreed, and then I said, I have to wonder if it's clean. Based on the seller, whose reputation is going into the toilet almost daily, you have to wonder now, has this card been cleaned? Has it been doctored? Has it been restored? Has it been trimmed? The old adage, I understand, and I, to this point, I agree. I mean, if, if a card measures up, what is a grading company to do? Especially in the limited time they have. They say that the average grader spends 10 seconds on a card. That was 10 seconds. It's actually a, a decent chunk of time. You look at the surface, you look at the edges, corners, centering. And that's fine and dandy on a Luca. I could crack this out and send it in tomorrow and it might come back at 10. I don't know. I didn't look at it that closely. I'm not worried about it. But I bought it because it was the price of a raw. It's a little off center, top to bottom. But as I've always told you, buy the card, not the grade. Collect nines, sell tens. The price spread on a ten versus a nine continues to grow. Rising tide raises all ships. So if a ten goes to astronomical amounts, a nine will go up. Not in anywhere near the degree of a ten, but it will go up. How much are Trout PSA Trout 2011 update PSA nines now? Three four hundred dollars. I don't even know. When PSA tens were two hundred, PSA nines were fifty. Read something recently on one of the bucket uh, uh, blowout threads and. 
Gentleman owned a 10 and is looking to grind, downgrade to a 9. Probably use those funds to uh, pick up something else he wants for his collection. So I wanted to get this out there. Something I've been thinking about pretty much daily as new new cards get a, get exposed for uh, fraudulent behavior being sold to uh, unknowing customers paying large sums of money in some cases. And these card doctors are known. These card manipulators, these cheaters, dirty, they're known. I don't have to say their names, but they're known. Therein lies the problem. If Submitter X gets caught for submitting trimmed cards and manipulated, doctored, conserved cards, and Submitter X gets banned. We used to say Submitter X doesn't get his friend Submitter Y to send them in. There's, or Submitter X's aunt or uncle or grandfather, grandmother, mother, father, brother, sister. Unfortunately, there's ways around it. Cheaters are always going to cheat. People that want to manipulate the system are going to manipulate the system. The hobby is going to be fine. There are a lot of doom and gloomers out there, especially on Blowout. A few of them are slab haters, and they're walking around with a strong case of uh, swallowing a bottle of Viagra, if you know what I mean. Very excited about what's going on with the seeming, seemingly seemingly the demise of third party third party grading and that's not going to happen just because buying online isn't going away so third party grading even though it might be a guy who didn't get any action last night grading your cards today he's still going to do his his best you would hope you would think so there you have it <clears throat> Still an underrated card, by the way. The show is coming up, guys. I'm checking in in 74 days. Wheels up in, in uh, 73 days and a few hours. Really looking forward to it. I hope I get to see each and every one of you there. Shout out to Caitlin. League of Their Own. She's been MIA since January. Stop by her channel. If you're not following her, submit, subscribe, subscribe, sorry. Leave her a message. Say, hey, I hope you're okay. We miss you here in the card community. In the meantime, try to pick out one or two new channels you've not watched yet. Watch some of their videos. Give them some support. For a lot of folks, these videos are difficult to make. A lot of people don't want to put themselves out there. If I can do it, you can do it. Everyone can do it. You just need a smartphone and a brain and share your opinions. As always, you matter. Always learning. Keep learning. Share your knowledge. And please, be kind.